Have you ever met the connector? Well, he ponders, he helps, he creates, he writes, he speaks. He basically connects people and brings them together. I speak about Paul Solano of PS and All Marketing Group. At psandallmarketinggroup.com, you will receive an assembled group of Paul's contacts and connections that cross into many sectors of life. Please contact Paul Solano at 617-240-4130 or psandallmarketinggroup at gmail.com if you are in the market for a wide array of services. Again, please contact The Connecta, Paul Solano at 617-240-4130 or psandallmarketinggroup at gmail.com with any questions. And now... Here's Paul Solano, the host of Paul Ponders. Welcome to Paul Ponders. My name is Paul Solano of PS and All Marketing Group, and I may be reached via email at paul at paulponders.com. Thank you for joining me for my foray into podcasting. It is great to be collaborating with my friend and associate, Chalonzo Amos of Pod Pro Entertainment, to bring you some fun, exciting, and informative podcasts. For many years, I've been referred to as the connector, or in greater Boston circles, as the connector. With psandallmarketinggroup.com, I've created a side gig to connect you and get things done. Please sit back and relax and listen to today's podcast. If you are driving or operating heavy machinery and just listening, then please just listen and stay focused on your task at hand. Thanks again for listening. Enjoy my ponderings. Let hashtag Paul Ponders begin. Greetings, everyone. How is everyone doing today? Welcome to another episode of hashtag Paul Ponders. Well, today we have a very unique way of presenting our podcast to you. I first want to welcome our distinguished guest, Mr. Tom Benedetto. Tom, welcome. Nice to be here. Thank you. Great to have you here. I just want to uh, congratulate you again on your upcoming induction into the National Italian American Sports Hall of Fame, Massachusetts chapter. Congratulations on that, Tom. Thank you. It's, it's, It's an honor to be put into this Hall of Fame with many of the previous inductees. Absolutely, without a doubt. So for those of you who are hearing this podcast, a few tickets are still available. If you want to give me a shout out at Paul at paulponders.com, or if you want to call me on my cell phone, 617-240-4130, if you want to, in fact, attend the event coming up at Anthony's in Malden, 105 Canal Street, you'll have a chance to see Tom inducted into the National Italian American Sports Hall of Fame, along with Dominic Sato, who is a graduate of the class of 1976, Malden High, and he's a two-time powerlifting champion and a world champion in powerlifting. So Tom, for our listeners in the audience, is in fact a minority owner of the Boston Red Sox and a former chairman of a soccer club in Rome. We'll be hearing more about about Tom in this podcast and with all the questions that we'll have for him. But here's the unique part about what this podcast is going to be. We're actually going to take a few minutes just to record what the guests in attendance will be hearing on October 3rd, October 15th at Anthony's. And I'm just going to lead in with the beginning part of what the program is going to be all about. And if you look up these words in the dictionary, these phrases in the dictionary, you will see the name and the picture of Tom Thomas De Benedetto with what he has accomplished in his illustrious career, not only in sports and in, um, in what he's done, but really the great career he's had in business. A very successful entrepreneur, investment banker, just an incredible human being. And I've had the opportunity to interview Tom and to get to know him over the past month or two. And I'll, I will say that I am totally blown away with his great accomplishments. So, Tom, we're about to start recording, have you just speak for about three minutes, but I'm going to lead you in. And then after we finish, 
we'll be uh, just having a very casual conversation about your great career. So are you ready, Tom? Sure. All righty. So basically, this is what Tom DiBenedetto is all about. Hard work, teamwork, time management, discipline, perseverance, mental preparation, focus, accountability, and part of the Italian-American heritage. Tom, take it away. I grew up in the uh, streets of Everett. My parents were unfortunately divorced uh, when I was just a, a, a little child. And I grew up with my, uh, my mother and my grandmother, and my mother worked, and my grandmother basically raised me. I never had any other siblings, and my, my parents, neither one of them ever remarried, and they both lived in the city of Everett. They, they did take my care to watch out for me over early years. I played sports 365 days of the year. My first really formal sports outside of Little League was the Parland Junior High School, which uh, in those days was, for me, in the eighth and ninth grade. We had outstanding teams, and I recall playing football. Uh, we had won 45 straight games, and you know, our last game every year was uh, against the Brockton All-Stars. Brockton would put their various junior high teams uh, together and, and make an All-Star team and play us. And, and that was in the ninth grade. And we won that game 6 nothing when I stole the ball from a halfback and ran 40-odd yards for a touchdown. Then during the basketball season of ninth grade, uh, we played uh, at the Boston Garden Unfortunately, we lost in double overtime in the finals to Somerville uh, Western Junior High. I made the all turning basketball team. That was sort of a, one of the highlights of my uh, basketball career at that, from that point on, actually. And then in baseball, uh, John Barbady was our baseball coach. He was a great coach. He went on to coach uh, at Watertown High in football and won, and won the Super Bowl for them. And John, ironically, also coached out at Dr. Phillips High School in uh, outside of Orlando, Florida, after he had retired. Then two of his players were A.J. Pazinski and Johnny Damon, who I had gotten to know in, in my future role as a owner of the Boston Red Sox. And 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 Johnny Damon loved John Barbini so much that he he, he worked to have the, the baseball field and that Dr. Phillips named after John Barbady. Yeah, and, and John, also in retirement, wound up being an assistant coach at St. John's Prep in Danvers. And John's a great, but still alive. That, uh, it was a great coach. But uh, after that, I went on to Everett High School, where uh, I was a member of uh, two uh, state championship football teams and had the good fortune of playing with such great players as... Uh, Pat Hughes and Frank Champy, friends of mine, and Jerry Grosso, and Billy Piaf and Tonio, and, 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 and many others. And, and that was a, really a great experience. And, and, and that led to me being offered an opportunity to go to Trinity College in Hartford, Connecticut, where I had four great years uh, playing football there. I also played one game of baseball, which is an interesting story. Got up against Springfield my freshman year, hit a double off the wall. Just missed a whole run, and we were getting killed, and that's why I got into the game. Uh, the next day in, in, in practice, I unfortunately, sliding into second base, broke my ankle. So I only got up once in college and got a double, and, and uh, for various reasons, I never played baseball again in college. But I, I, I did enjoy playing football in college and, and had some some great experiences, which culminated in my, my final game against Wesleyan, where I uh, got the game ball for that game, and, and I, I, I cherished that uh, greatly. We uh, we had a great season my senior year, and, and I, I still got together with my teammates. In fact, we just this past weekend honored my coach, Don Miller, who was a two-time All-American at, at Delaware. Don turned 90. Uh, he's, he still has his faculties about him, and he remembers all his players, and it was a real great honor playing for him. And Jared, like my coach, Udi Sano and Everett High, uh, they, they were great coaches and great men who uh, who loved their players. And it's something I'd like to say about coaches. 
you know, coaches do great things for their players and they're great leaders and they're great leaders of men and they teach their players so much. Sports have been a great, a great honor for me. And, and as, as I got, you know, older and, and I, I went to graduate school at the University of Pennsylvania and Wharton School and then went to Wall Street and was fortunate enough to wind up being a partner in the Boston Red Sox in 1978. I've been involved ever since, and then I became the first American to be president of the Italian Serie A football club. I've managed to meet an awful lot of people who have had an impact on my life. I must say, of all those people, the coaches that I that I had, I look back and the lessons I learned from them have been so impactful uh, in my life. So, you know, lessons that teach you management of your time. Your, your perseverance, your loyalty, and uh, hard work. These, these are all things that, that contribute to one's success. And sort of the great Winston Churchill always said, you know, never give up. People, you know, people have challenges in life and and they have failures in life and and, and, and no one ever is, is uh, devoid of those. But if you never give up and you, and you pick yourself up, who will succeed in life, and certainly, uh, I've had my my, my share of, of all of those things, and and I'm very grateful to my coaches and and the lessons I learned on the athletic fields and what I learned on the streets of effort. And by the way, those lessons I learned there probably saved my life many times when I was doing some of the work I did in uh, in the streets of Moscow, which I spent uh, many years on. I'm very grateful for. For everyone who, who crossed my path, all the players I played with, many who were much better players than I, but I but I always you know, gave my best, and and that's the other thing is you know you can never you can never give more than your best, but always always give your best, and uh, grateful and thankful, and and also my professors. I, I I am still in contact with my advisor who advised me at Trinity College, and and it's over fifty years now. And fortunately, he's still alive, and, and he was very instrumental in, in, in my growth as a student. I can't say enough about how important studying is and, and how important my education was. The ancient Greeks were both uh, athletically minded and studi- studious minded, and I tried to uh, stay that way my whole life. So uh, I'm, I'm very thankful. I'm very thankful for what uh, the Almighty has uh, given me. and. I have five sons. All five went to Trinity College, and two of them played professional baseball. One still does. He's, uh, he plays uh, in, in the independent leagues now. I follow them, and my wife and I have been fortunate. Uh, I've been married. I'll be married 40 years this weekend. And I've been uh, fortunate. Uh, we've been fortunate to be able to travel the world to watch some play as my sons have played all over the world. So from the streets of Everett to... Uh, you know the rest of the world. It has been a, a great try. I thank you, and I and I and I'm very proud of my Italian American heritage, and and I wish my dad were here to see him. My dad came over to this country when he was 16 years old, and I don't think he could have uh, imagined uh, everything that uh, that I, I've been able to experience. And, and one other thing, when I was a kid growing up, my uncle Arthur Masato was. Uh, became the ticket manager of the Boston Red Sox. So as a, a young boy growing up, I always had Red Sox tickets. I didn't have a really didn't have any money, but I had Red Sox tickets. And that was that was better than money. And the first date with my wife was at Fenway Park. And 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 on our honeymoon, we ended our honeymoon at Fenway Park watching Collier Strumsky's last weekend, last two games. The Red Sox have always been deep into my heart, and they still are, despite when, you know, how the season has ended. But I love the Red Sox, I love the Patriots, I love the Celtics, I love the Bruins, I love the Boston sports teams. Thank you very much. Well, thank you, Tom, and um, that concludes the recording aspect of what the what the listeners, what the attendees in attendance at the National Italian-American Sports Hall of Fame Massachusetts Chapter Induction Ceremony will be hearing along with the slideshow presentation. Again, tickets are still available. If you wanted to reach out to me at paul at paulponders.com. But now, 
let's get into, let's just go back and forth on, on your wonderful, wonderful career, Tom. And again, I congratulate you on, on your great accomplishments and all, but, uh, just speaking to you and just, um, learning so much about life in general with what you've experienced in life. And it all started in the streets of Everett. And you talked about the greats, about Bobby Leo, who's going to be in attendance. He's an honoree. He's an inductee. Bobby Leo and Frank Champa, uh, just some greats of yesteryear, along with Coach Moody Sano and the Everett tradition of having great coaches and great mentors and all. Tell us about what it was like growing up. And I think you were president of your class for Everett High School class in yes. 1967, I believe. Yes, I was. Yes, that that was great. And you um, wanted, always wanted to go into college to study economics, right? Right, that's correct. And you made a great career of it in the world of investment banking. Tell us about uh, where, where you worked and, and what your life was like after Trinity College and just um, going into the, the business world. I'm fascinated with your, your business world history. Yeah. Well, I, you know, going to Trinity College, I, I majored in economics, and but I also took courses in literature, different types of literature, like Oriental literature and and, and Shakespeare and things of that nature, because I wanted to I wanted to get exposed to different cultures. I took it. In fact, in fact I took two years of, of Italian uh, in a year of Italian literature, and I found all that to be very helpful to me when I started going to places like Moscow and, and Hungary and, and different parts of, of uh, Eastern Europe, because I, I, I wasn't at all fearful of meeting with people from all these different cultures, because I felt that the education that I had received had prepared me well for, for meeting with people who had different backgrounds. And, and basically, people were people. And, and, and I found that the first thing to do was to find some common bo uh, bind between you and, and the other person that you were meeting with, despite the fact that, you know, they were from some other part of the world that was, was theoretically different from you. But, but basically, people are people, and, and everybody would like to, you know, find, find a way to, to get close to you. So, so my education... In, in addition to all, you know, what you learned in books and so forth, was one of, of you know, meeting different people from 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 different types of uh, uh, backgrounds and different cultural backgrounds, and and learning from them, and and you know, basically to this day, I I find myself, uh, you know, never stop learning, and and, and that's I, I enjoy that greatly. That's awesome. Yeah, and. And when, when I graduated from Wharton, I I went to work on in Wall Street as an investment banker doing uh, real estate finance and corporate finance, and, and I worked at, at Morgan Stanley, and then Solomon Brothers, and uh, and then Allen and Company. So I, I did that for ten years combined in those three firms, and and then I went into business myself after. That's great, and I remember you saying that. Uh, you joined the Red Sox as a minority owner in 1978. Yes, in 1978. That's correct. That's great. And you, you're you still involved with the Fenway uh, Fenway Group, right? Yeah, the Fenway Sports Group, which which owns the, the, the Red Sox and Liverpool and Roush Racing and McElroy's uh, golf team that will we'll be starting in January and and some advisory businesses, uh, sports advisory, marketing businesses also. That is tremendous. And you were also involved with the AS Roma uh, sports uh, soccer team? Yes. And yeah, I was way back in 2011, and I was head of that for a while. And uh, that was a very interesting experience. Uh, again, a different cultural experience. I got to spend a fair amount of time in Italy during during those couple of years that uh, that I was head of the team, but uh, I, I you know I, I enjoyed the experience and it was uh, something that uh, is now you know these teams now are and I, I think incredibly valuable. 
So it's a little ahead of my time, but without a doubt. And it just goes to show the type of person you are returning to your roots really in Boston. You love the Boston sports scene. You love Trinity College and and you still do a lot of counseling and a lot of mentoring with potential applicants to Trinity College. And you've been on the board of trustees, longtime trustee of Trinity College. And also there's a stadium in your name. Congratulations to Benedetto Stadium. Tell us about that. What, what's that about? Well, the, the, the baseball stadium at Trinity bears, bears my name. And uh, so it's a, a great stadium. Uh, we have great athletic fields at Trinity and uh, quite honored that that has taken place. And we have, uh, you know, with the Boston Red Sox, we have several people from Trinity College who, who worked there, including the president, Sam Kennedy, a very talented fellow, and the president of Liverpool, Billy Hogan, a very talented fellow. There's, there's quite a few others there, and also the, the head of the PGA, uh, who used to work for the Fenway Sports Group, is, uh, is also a Trinity College grad. So, And actually, Derek Fowley, who was well, was an intern for me, uh, who's a member of uh, the, the Falby family that originated out of Everett. He's a Trinity grad, and he's president of the baseball operations from the Minnesota Twins. And his cousin, who also went to Trinity, is now head of a base of, of uh, business development for the University of Colorado, which uh, has uh, this guy Dion Sanders as their coach. In Fort Myers, we have a relationship with Dion that goes way back with, uh, we have a, a lady who works with us who's really part of our family. She's been with us for 30 years. An interesting story because her uh, her daughter went to the senior prom with Dion. And then eventually Dion asked her to marry, marry him, but Dion, uh, but she refused. She said, Dion, you're not ready for marriage. She was right, by the way. But, but Dion's mother and, and and our, our friend uh, Janice Moore, our best friends, and, and so Dion periodically comes to Fort Myers, and 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 he's very friendly with Janice's two grandsons, who both played in the NFL. Uh, Jalen Watkins, whose half brother Sammy still plays, uh, and and Jeremy Ware, who was a he, Jeremy was a defensive back for uh, Oakland until he and then he broke his ankle, and, and so his career was shortened. But Jalen played seven years, seven, eight years. And I'm pretty friendly with Jalen. So anyway, so we have this, through Brenda now, we have this relationship heightened with Dion. And the mayor of Fort Myers, my friend Billy Smith, was, he always had a good relationship with Dion when he was mayor. I've been watching all of the Colorado games, so I'm, I'm really good friends with the Falvies. His, In fact, his grandfather was one of my dad's best friends. They worked together at TMD States. Oh, that's great. It's a small world, you know. The world's a the world's a very small world, and and, and then you know that's another thing. If you're nice to people, you know, it, it, it eventually it comes back to you. It doesn't hurt to be nice. To that is so true. So as we wind down this wonderful podcast of Paul Ponders and all, what could you tell our listeners about life in general if you're looking to, in fact, get involved in something that you truly love? What is your, what's your advice? You know, if you have a passion for something, pursue your passion, work hard, study it, and, you know, find, you know, find a way to, to connect with, with, with people in, in the area that you have a passion for. You know, and and, and and prepare yourself for it. You know, study. You know, train whatever whatever it is you want to do in in that field. You know, just prepare yourself for it. You know, people that that excel in different fields, in most cases, it's not an accident. You know, they they work hard. They 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 train or study. Uh, so and 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 then when the opportunity comes, don't be afraid to fail. You know it's like in sales. Somebody once told me, you you, you got to try about a dozen times with the same customer before you get the sale. So don't be afraid if someone says no. You could just keep on going back. 
show show the people you, you care, show the person you care that you really want it. You know, and then and then once we once we get the opportunity, just just work hard, show up early, and leave late. Is it true that no is the second best word you hear in sales? Yes is the first. <laughs> yeah, that's right. I love it. Yeah, that's it. You're right. You're right. You're, you're, you know, you just got to keep on knocking on the door. Eventually, they'll say yes. Absolutely. I mean, that's people coming to me. You know, eventually they say yes. You know. I love it. I love it. Well, Tom, this has been an absolute, absolute honor. Again, I congratulate you on your honor being inducted into the National Italian American Sports Hall of Fame, Massachusetts chapter uh, Sports Hall of Fame. Congratulations, Tom. It, the honor is is mine. I I I am really honored to to be in the presence of people like my distant relative Bobby Leo, who as a kid I idolized Bobby. You know, they're very sure whoever as good as he was. Absolutely. Thank you. Well, oh, you're welcome. Thank you, really. And again, if you go to Merriam Webster Dictionary and you look up phrases and words such as hard work, teamwork, time management discipline, perseverance, mental preparation, focus, and accountability. I think there's a very good chance that you will see Tom Benedetto or his pitcher under those words and all. So, Tom, again, thank you. And until we meet again, everyone, I want to thank you for joining us today with another episode of Hashtag Paul Ponders. Hashtag Indeed. I trust that you have enjoyed Hashtag Paul Ponders. Again, my name is Paul Solano of PS and All Marketing Group, and I may be reached via email at paul at paulponders.com to do some more pondering. Many thanks to my longtime collaborative friend and associate, Jalonzo Amos of Pod Pro Entertainment, in bringing you our fun, exciting, and informative podcast. You rock, Techie Jalonzo. With PNS and All Marketing Group, I created a side gig to connect you and get things done. Please do not hesitate to reach out to me at paul at paulponders.com with any questions. Subscribe to our YouTube channel at Paul Ponders. Follow us on Twitter at Paul Ponders Pod. Follow us on Instagram at Paul Ponders Podcast. Thank you again for listening to Hashtag Paul Ponders, available on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, our website, paulponders.com, or wherever you stream your podcasts. Subscribe, stream, rate, and review our shows. Your ratings and reviews help our show reach new audiences. Produced by Pod Pro Entertainment, Hashtag Paul Ponders lives within a network of podcasts located at podproentertainment.com hashtag the new radio until we meet again my friend stay well hashtag indeed